Yo, what's up? This is Patrick from Guy in the Cube. And in this video, I wanna introduce everyone to paginated reports and I wanna talk about why you should use paginated reports instead of Power BI reports. Stay tuned. <laughs> Finding this for the very first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date from all the videos from both Adam and this guy. Believe it or not, paginated reports have been out for many years um, with SQL Server reporting services released a long time ago. And a lot of people never use SQL Server reporting services. Then we introduced this Power BI report server and people use it just for Power BI reports and they didn't use it for paginated reports. And now Microsoft is releasing premium per user, which exposes paginated reports to a whole new group of people. I know, I know you could have done it in premium, but premium is too expensive for a lot of people. But premium per user I think is going to be a little more affordable and it's going to have a you know a new user base a new group of developers and designers of these paginated reports and I decided to do a video to kind of level set and make sure you guys know when you use a paginated report compared to a Power BI report okay so instead of all this talking you guys know what I like to do let's do what let's head over to my laptop to get started with paginated reports you need a design environment and just like Power BI desktop Paginated Reports has Power BI Report Builder. If you do a quick internet search for Power BI Report Builder, download Power BI Report Builder, you'll land on this page and you click download. You can download the Report Builder. If you're signed into your Power BI tenant, you can click on the little down arrow right here and then download Power BI Report Builder. Either way, it'll bring you to the same place. Once you have it, go ahead and launch it and then sign in to your Power BI, right? Sign in using your Power BI credentials, get signed in. Then you start designing your report. If you've never designed paginated reports, it, it can be a little, it's not as easy as Power BI reports, right? Power BI reports, you're just dragging and dropping and things are just appearing on the canvas, boom, 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 boom. Doesn't work like that with paginated reports. You can use wizards and stuff inside of paginated reports. And I'll show you that when I head back to my laptop. But if you've never done this before, Laura Graham Brown has a YouTube channel where she does, she's doing like a 12 days of paginated reports. You should check that out. Chris Finland has great videos on paginated reports on his YouTube channel. We have some videos on paginated reports on Guy and Cube YouTube channel. And there is a paginated report in the day course that you can download and walk through. All these things will get you up to speed on how to design paginated reports. So what you wanna do after you get signed in, you right click on data sources and you add your data source. You can use a data set that's published out to Power BI, or you can you know, use your own data source. If you click on add data source, you'll see there's SQL Server, Common Data Service, SQL Database, Oracle. You can just enter data, okay? Once you have your data source, you right click on it and then you create a data set. And you can see I have a few data sets that I've created right here. Once you do that, then you start designing your report. If you click on insert in the ribbon, you can say insert a table, insert a matrix, list, map, charts, lots of different types of charts and gauges and spark lines and indicators, all types of things here. What's great about this is Microsoft's introducing some things that you can do conditionally with you know certain elements on the Power BI report. With paginated reports, you have access to almost every pixel of that particular report, every bar on the chart, every line on the graph, every element cell in a table, you have access to all this via a properties window that you can open up. And so like if I click on this, this table right here and I go to view and choose properties, it'll open up this properties window and man, I can get myself in trouble here. You really can't get yourself in trouble, but you can walk through designing your reports, controlling visibility, controlling color, just controlling, you know, expanding, collapsing, all types of things here. You can do row groups and column groups, just a, a phenomenal breadth of things that's available to you when you're designing your reports. If you get stuck, right? And it's not laid out how you want it to lay out, put it in a rectangle and it'll probably uh, fix it. If it's already in a rectangle, take it out of a rec rectangle because it's either going to help help the formatting or hurt the formatting. So you use rectangles or don't use them. It just, you got to test it out. If you get stuck more, there's a website, I think it's a Git repo that you can go to and all the information that I'm talking about, Laura Graham's blog, uh, Chris Finland's blog, the paginated reports, and the report samples that I'm about to talk about. Links to all those are where? 
in the comments below and you can download them, right? So if you wanna go get some really neat examples of like invoicing and transcripts and labels, you can go and download that from a link that we'll post below and it'll give you, you know, like some ideas on how to create your own reports. And what's great about these is they use the enter data choice as the data source. So you don't have to worry about connecting to some external data source. You can just open them up, run them, test them out, kick the tires, look at the design and even copy some of the design for your own reports. Okay. So it's easy. Once you're done designing your report, then you publish it. So you can either save it locally. You can say save if you're, you need to continue to work on it. If you want to publish it to Power BI, you choose file, save as, and choose a Power BI service. When you click the service, it'll show you, you know, all the workspaces available. You need to publish this out to a workspace that's backed by premium or premium per user. So you click here and I already have this report deployed and you click save and it'll publish that report out. Once the report is published out, you head over to Power BI. Let's go to that workspace and then go to find your report. You'll, you'll see how it's the icon is a little different, right? This is your paginated report. Click on the ellipsis here and choose setting manage, not settings, choose manage. And then if your data is coming from on-premises, you'll need to choose a gateway on-premises or not. You got to provide the credentials unless you use the enter data option, then the data is just contained within the report. All right. Once you do all that, you can just simply go here and run your report. Once I run my report, if you have parameters that you need to specify, it's going to prompt you to enter those parameters and then you just run your report. We'll come back to this in a little bit. Another, another way to actually get an RDL file. If you go back into your workspace and go to a data set and hover over the ellipsis, you'll see an option here to download the RDL. What will happen there is it'll download an RDL with a connection already established to that data set, Th that data set as that'll be the data source. That data set will be the data source for that report. And then you can create data sets based on that data source. So now you have your report out and you're ready to go, but you're probably still thinking, why can't I use Power BI reports? Why wouldn't I just use Power BI reports? They're just easy drag and drop, drag and drop. Boom, 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 boom. There's my bar graph. There's my table, but they don't always fit the bill. And so, I was working with the customer. Yeah, I was working with the customer and they were trying to do something. I was like, why not use a paginated report? Let me show you. And so what they done is they designed this really nice report. And so if you go right here, choose buying group account, this is the report they created and they created this really nice report. You can see it's, it's actually pretty nice. And what they did was they had this buying group and then they had a location and then they set their date range. And then what they would do, this is true story. I can't make this up. They would choose an invoice choose export and then export it to PDF. And then they would choose another invoice and do the same thing and repeat it for every invoice. And I said, what if you have 10 of these? What if there are 10 invoices? And they're like, we do it 10 times. So it's like, oh, that is not efficient at all. And so this was before the, the export API came out and everything like that. And I'm going to do some videos with Power Automate and the export API and show you kind of how you can automate these things. Okay. But I'm just, I'm showing you why you would do this with paginated reports instead of Power BI reports. So I said, don't do this. Don't do this. This, this is not something you want to do. If you want to really do this, you would use a paginated report. And so watch if I go here and open up my paginated report, I have the exact same prompts. In fact, I'm connecting to the exact same data set. Um, and so I choose my location. I mean, I choose my buying group. I choose my location. I click view my report. And what you're going to see here is because I set up the grouping on each one of the invoices when I design my report and I said, give me a page break after each invoice. And so now this is one invoice. There's another invoice on another page and there's another invoice on another page. And then if I click export, it'll give me a single PDF file. And instead of attaching three PDF files to the email, I just attach a single PDF file and then I can send that out to my customer. I don't have to do it for each invoice that my customer, you know, has, I could do it a single time. And you're probably thinking, Patrick, but can I automate this? Yes. Like I said earlier, I'm going to do a video, show you how you can couple power automate up to do the, do this in an automated fashion. So stay tuned for that video. It's coming out in the very, very near future, but this is just a typical example, right? This is a reason or, you know, 
how, why you would use paginated reports instead of Power BI reports. Think about transcripts or report cards or labels, you know, and invoices, right? It's easier to do this with paginated reports instead of trying to do, you know, this manual process with Power BI reports. All right, what do you guys think? You got any questions, you got any comments? Are you using paginated reports? I love to know. Let's continue the conversation where? In the comments below. It's your first time visiting the Guy in the Cube channel. Hit that subscribe button. If you like my video, give me a big thumbs up. As always, from Adam and myself, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.